Welcome to this web lecture on the vehicle routing problem. So we're looking into an example of Cool to UE and Cool to UE delivers pre-ordered ice cream to customers in and around Eindhoven using a fleet of cargo bikes. And the question is how can Cool to UE ensure to visit all customers with their fleet of cargo bikes? So if I'm looking at this, this looks very much like a TSP but with multiple different vehicles. So let's look into the recipe for formulations for the TSP. In this recipe, in this formulation, we have sets, which in this case is only the locations. We have parameters, which is just the transport costs. We have decision variables, which is the decision whether or not we move along one arc. Then we have constraints for flow conservation, subterranean elimination and domain restriction and we're minimizing the total travel costs. The easiest way of adapting this to, to the multi-vehicle case is introducing a set that refers to these multiple vehicles and we refer to the set as K. Obviously, this K then also has to enter the decision variables, so we have to introduce an additional index to this decision variable X and then x i j k refers to a vehicle k in k traveling from i in v to j in v. Obviously we also have to introduce this index k in all x variables in the constraints in the objective function. As a next step we have to uh, specifically consider a depot because things happen slightly differently at the depot than elsewhere. So at the depot we obviously have multiple vehicles that can leave while at all other nodes we only have one vehicle that can leave there. So what we have to do, while the flow conservation stays the same, we have to split the visit all nodes constraint. So here we have to separate the depot and for the depot we now can just have up to k vehicles leaving. And the last thing that we have to consider is obviously we also have to sum overall k in the objective function because of course we would like to have the cost not only for one vehicle but for all of them. So this is the entire magic when it comes to adapting this mathematical model formulation. So this formulation we refer to as the three index formulation which is fairly obvious because x now has three indices no longer two and this has one clear disadvantage. So if you look into this solution, it might actually be the optimal solution for this instance. We have the red cargo bike traveling this route and we have the blue cargo bike traveling that route. But the problem is just switching those two gives us a solution that has exactly the same cost and is also otherwise not actually differentiable if the red and the blue cargo bike are exactly the same. Why do we have to treat them independently? And this is what we refer to as symmetries. So a symmetry is if different solutions result in the same objective function value. And they usually are a result of an irrelevant differentiation. So for example, our differentiation between the red and the blue cargo bike. And for most of the shelf solvers and also quite a few heuristics, these symmetries increase the runtime quite significantly. And what we thus have to do is we have to either come up with a model that doesn't have symmetries in the first place, or we have to explicitly break those symmetries. For example, by saying that the red truck always goes to location one and the blue truck always visits location two. What I would like you to look into is how many symmetries does a VRP in the three index formulation have? What I would like you to take away from this web lecture on the three index formulation of the vehicle routing problem is first of all the formulation itself, secondly what symmetries are, third I would like you to look into the number of equal solutions. What we're going to look into in the next web lecture is the two index formulation and then afterwards we're also going to look into capacities and timing. Thanks.